I'm Heather Murray and I'm welcoming you to my Into the Wild Mixed Media Nature Workshop class. Uh, I hope you'll have fun. Uh, I'm sure that you're here because you love animals as I do and you can see that I have several around me in my working space and they are my muses. Um, it's uh, helpful to have them around. I find them very comforting. This workshop I thought I would con really concentrate on wild animals which is new to me. This is my working space. Um, I'm, I'm actually showing you a little bit around where I work because some people feel it's an obstacle not to have a studio or not to have a dedicated working space and this is to prove that you don't need a lot of space to be able to create something wonderful for yourself. So I encourage you to find a corner in your house, your apartment, your room just for yourself and set up everything you need and don't worry too much about cleanup until you're all done. <laughs> Hopefully you can leave some things out for a while. Um, so uh, without further ado I just want to carry on and let you know in this workshop we're going to be looking at the wildlife that's around us. Um, the wildlife around me may be different than the wildlife around you but the main thing I look at is um, images that will be striking to me that are appealing to me in some way. Um, I also look to see that they're relevant to um, the perspective of my page so that I don't have something here. I've got a huge um, bird, <laughs> Robin as a matter of fact, and it, a lot of this is about placement. If I have another image of trees in a barn, I want to make sure that the the bird is in reference to the barn is going to be the right size and also whether I want to use this as a horizontal or vertical piece. Um, it can make all the difference in the wor world the placement of your images. You're kind of thinking ahead of your story. So I look at what goes together. Um, I constantly hunt for new images to, to add to my pictures. This is really unusual for me to concentrate strictly on animals because I tend to use humans predominantly in my work and it feels a little odd to be thinking so um, strictly of the subject matter but sure doesn't bother me because I love, I love animals, I love birds. So you can see how I've put this bird right over an image of the trees and a little bit of overlapping is really important. You're not going to be gluing this down, but you're just getting an idea of really what goes together. And I, I think that you can really, um, you could spend a little time on this part because really you're mapping out your picture ahead. And if you've got all your elements in place, usually it should flow pretty smoothly. Um, here's a little lamb that I have. And you know what, using the wrong background will, will not say what you want to say. I mean, I'm looking here, I'm really not too crazy about the idea of having um, the water and the trees with the lamb. Um, and I hope you're okay with it being on the side like this, this is how I filmed it. <laughs> but I think you still get the general idea. Um, having that together really isn't effective. And then I found this other picture of a road that I took one winter's day and um, it to me the loneliness of the road and the, the whole landscape around it just really added to the piece so uh, really think about placement and what you want to put together because it can totally transform your painting and what you're trying to say in mixed media for those of you who are collage artists you probably already have figured this out but it really is something to to do a lot of and if you keep a, a journal or a collage journal it will help you with a little bit more with placement and with the design of your piece um, because I'm all, always playing around with this um, for the the sake of this workshop I've decided to do everything um, on paper. Um, I have a few pieces on um, canvas that I'll also share with you but right now um, it's easier to work with the paper pieces um, and they're easier to store it <laughs> right, currently as well and you can use paper too. You can use whatever substrate works for you. Again I'm playing around with this owl. Um, if you've taken my course before you'll know that I'm big on cutting out my images very very tight like making sure that I've cut the the main subject which in this case is the owl and um, I've 
I make sure that I've got um, the right kind of uh, dimensions again with it as well. So here I am, I've already put some medium down on my paper and I've glued the, Im the background image on um, and so I've left some space at the bottom where I'm going to paint in the, the, the land. Um, the upper part that I've actually used mixed media, uh, my media, medium, <laughs> matte medium, <laughs> I gotta get my mediums right, um, on, uh, it's actually already kind of there and, I, and again, I'm assuming you've taken my course before but if you haven't, um, I would suggest that you put a lot of medium on each side of uh, the, the back of your image and also on the substrate, the paper or the canvas because you'll want a really good grab. Um, I use medium a lot in my work and I think it's a great tool, it's a great media to use. Um, so right now I'm just point painting in the soil with brown acrylic paint. I think it's like a, it's probably a, an umber of some sort or a raw raw brown sienna or umber. <laughs> I don't paint, I look at what I what appeals to me. So I'm, when I'm instructing a class, I'm not um, asking people to use the exact colors I use. I want you to try to use your own colors that you enjoy. Um, the sky, I've blended turquoise with some gray. Um, I, I don't like often to put down pure colors um, because I find the mixed color gives it a more painterly effect and I can create more mood when I mix my colors. So at the bottom, right now I'm not doing much in the way of mixing. I'm just leaving it to start with. And you'll notice when we're doing these paintings that sometimes it won't seem really logical what I'm doing. <laughs> sometimes to me it doesn't seem logical. But as I proceed, um, I, can, I can get a sense of whether the, the whole picture is pulling together well and what it needs. And that you'll develop, if you haven't already, you'll develop an eye for that too. So I'm just playing here with the owl to see where I put the owl down. And uh, where I'm using a little bit of, I'm trying not to dip the brush into my coffee. And um, now I'm using some lighter sort of titanium parchment white to kind of lighten it up a little bit. I'm also adding clear medium on top of my glue down owl because it's um, I find it really adheres better when I have clear medium on top. Um, there's been a little bit of a time lapse here. I waited till the background dried a little before I added the medium because often what you can do is grab the color from the painting and pull it in over the, the image. Sometimes that is what you want to do and that's okay, but if it's not completely dry, just remember your medium won't be, will pull up some of the color as well. So I try to bear that in mind when I'm doing one of these pieces. Something I didn't also mention was um, I, I taped my paper down. It's still it's popping up a little on me, but it gives me a little bit of a, an, an edge, which I like. Not necessary, but I think you are adding some moisture and paint to the paper so it'll ripple more unless you do um, tape it down. Um, you can see now I'm going a little crazy with the, the parchment white. I'm putting little blobs here and there. And that's more just to give it a little bit more of, again, a painterly look. Um, I'm adding more, some of the same color into the owl. Um, when I'm looking at, at my images, I'm kind of squinting my eyes and looking where is the darkest part, where is the light, lightest part, and kind of working with that. And that is one of my reasons for working with black and white, also because I feel I have a template to work from 
but I'm also not copy copy the colors. I'm, I'm adding my own colors and my own feeling to the piece. Um, whatever you might feel about using images, um, I try to use um, um, copyright free images and I try to use my own images whenever possible and sometimes it works best when I just use really old images that um, are not credited to anyone but really you have to have your own comfort level with this and also it depends on what you're doing whether you're selling them or using them for your own use. Um, it would be pretty hard for me to get a nice shot of an owl like this but what I'm trying to do is change it enough so it becomes mine. So it's not going to be a crisp photograph at the end, it's going to be a little bit looser. Um, I'm going to look at blending the edges a little bit over. Right now I'm just blocking in a few colors, but going the lightest lights and a little bit darker and staying with the same color theme um, as nature, I, I would presume would be. So you're really going to get it to pop when you're using the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And the medium tones are really nice too. And you can see how I'm not worried so much about the feathers being totally accurate. If I was, I'd be just replicating the photo. But what I'm trying to do is get more of a feel for the bird and um, just add my little bits of color here and there. Um, and uh, again, work with the shadows, work with the brighter areas, um, kind of follow it and not make it up. Like I'm still following the lines of the wings and the shape of the bird, but I'm not worrying so much about getting every line perfect. Um, the eyes and the face are, are rather important because that's what's really stunning about the owl. So I'm trying to leave that there as much as possible, but aiming for a looser effect than I typically do. So you can see as I add, and even in the background, I'm, I have the, that little bit of that color, which isn't quite white. It's Hi and welcome back. This is our second project. We're working on the Lonesome Lamb on the Road and as you can see here I'm adding some matte medium to the back of the background piece of the road and I will make sure that both surfaces are well covered with the matte medium so that I get a good grip all around um, and then just um, sometimes I use my fingers and then often I'll go over with a brush and the medium to make sure it's nice and flush. It's important right here what's happening is I'm, I'm overlapping the tape a little bit so when I try to rip the tape at the end it's going to pull the background up too so I'm trying to fit it in so that that doesn't happen. So just be mindful of your tape and work around it. <laughs> So you can use a lot of medium, you can be very generous with it. I tend to buy a giant jar um, and then put, put the, the medium that I'm using in a smaller container like a margarine or a yogurt container. So here you go, I'm just uh, covering it as well as I can um, and that way when I also put my subject on it's, um, it's much easier to to work with it and if while the medium is wet if I have if I do have the lamb I can put it on top because I'm not really painting around it too much uh, often I'll wait till it's totally dry and then add my my subject on top so here we have um, uh, we're just starting to create a little bit of a background um, I'm keeping the colors rather muted here I'm looking for a moody piece so I'm not going to use a lot of bright colors. Um, I'm even um, darkening some of my greens. I'm, I'm finding them a little bit too intense. So using, adding a little bit of, and, and if you can, try to mix your colors so that you get a little, if you add a little yellow to your green or, an, or a little brown and um, dab on some different, different shades of the same color. It'll just make your, your piece come alive a lot more 
looks more realistic, I think, because nothing is really that fl flat in real life. Um, it is rather dark in the background, so we're really working with a suggestion of uh, shrubbery and, and trees. My little meat plate there. <laughs> um, so, um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just looking at the shaded areas and working with whatever color I think would best suit it. If you're looking for a more cheerful, upbeat painting, you'll be probably lightening a lot of your color shades to brighten it up. And that'll give you a totally different effect. I don't think that the sheep will look so lonely with brighter colors, but I wanted this effect. Um, it makes, makes you question a little bit what's going on. So now we're on to one of my favorite parts in creating a sky and I think a sky really makes a landscape come to life and I with a lot of my works I don't use lots and lots of detail because I save my detail for um, the foreground or for the subject but nonetheless I think that having a, an interesting sky or a cluster of trees really makes a difference in a, in a piece like this. So I, I kind of, my fallback color is turquoise, so you'll see that there, I use a lot of the same palette in my pieces. And what I did here is very simple. I just followed the shadows in the sky. So the light area is where the clouds might be, um, and they won't stay completely white. Um, I'll work some color into them as well. But you can see that I'm working with that, um, that, for lack of a better word, for a template because it's already mapped out for me there. I just need to add the color and uh, follow follow the lines and that really takes me there. And then my job after that is making it pop a little, making it come alive. And we know really nothing in life, anything visually that we see in the world, uh, particularly the natural world, it's flat or one color. So you can be playful with your color. Um, you can add other colors in with it. Again, with this particular piece, I'm not I'm not trying to be too playful because I'm creating um, a kind of a little bit of a darker tone to the piece. Um, I, I also realized as I'm doing this that although I really like the lamb, I, really the lamb is not technically wildlife they're wild as in not as domesticated as house animals but our pets but nonetheless um, I think that you could probably <laughs> extend the definition a little bit that's what I've done here so um, you pick whatever wild animal is wild to you and I'm sure it'll be fine I just thought the lamb worked really well in this piece and there's a vulnerability about a lamb and a sheep that I think works with this particular um, painting. So you can see I've just used a little bit of a little bit of white mixed with some turquoise in the background just kind of mapping it out. Um, I won't probably do very much in terms of a color in this piece because I think the subtlety of it works on its own. Um, some some pieces I'll build up a fair bit more, but this one not so much. Um, I'll probably add a little highlight to the lamb and that'll be about the extent of it. Here's where I just use a little bit of white uh, paint to add some highlights to the work. Um, I find that this is really helpful um, in bringing your piece to life. Um, if you can go to the darkest places and the lightest places, I think I described that before. And um, just touch up around the edges where your paint seems to be missing from the, the paper. So I try to fill in around the trees and that sort of thing just to, to kind of add a little bit more extra to it. Um, just a little tip. You want to fill it in as much as possible um, and put some highlights 
white highlights wherever you think it would make the the painting or your subject come alive. Um, this the I'm keeping it rather subtle in this one compared to some of my other ones. I just wanted to show you some techniques here around the sky and um, kind of working at creating a mood in a piece. Here I'm using just a little touch of umber just to kind of shadow the, the sheep a little bit, the lamb. Um, if I keep it totally grayscale, I find it looks too much like a photograph too, so I like to try to use some of the colors I've already used um, in the figure as well, even though with the lamb I've kept it pretty simple. Um, I think the, a little bit of shadowing helps. So here we are with the little fox and uh, I've enjoyed doing this one. Um, I'm enjoying trying to work with the colors uh, and trying to add again another level of mystique with the, the house in the background. Um, and I think the fox on his own it holds the picture together but when you add another element it just becomes that much more complete. Um, I've zipped ahead with this one just because some of the things that I've demonstrated already um, we've been through so I wanted to move this forward. Um, what might be a little bit different with this one is adding all the elements and making them blend well into the background. Um, I've added trees, a little strip of trees as well as the house. Um, and as you can see now I'm adding a moon <laughs> which is just I use a circle the top of a, a paint container um, paint tube and circle around it and paint it in that with the, using my my china pencil um, to mark on the, the actual paper um, I think the moon adds another a little extra to this you can see how all the colors come together. I'm using a little highlight in the building there. Um, I've highlighted places on the fox where I want the moon to glow and for just a little bit of extra emphasis on the three-dimensional quality of this creature. And um, used a little bit of um, a reddish brown shade in, in his fur, um, shadowing slightly. One thing I will mention is I tend to not use a lot of paint on my brush. I tend to, to paint quite dry. Um, I started off with gray in the background of this particular piece.
In this particular project, the little fawn, um, I actually started off as a, with a grey background as well, just like the previous painting, and painted up. So again, I won't um, go on and on with every little detail because it pretty well mimics what I've showed you already. Some little differences in this particular painting is I added these little dots of colour um, in the trees to brighten it up a little bit. Um, and also to add a little bit more personality and an, and an, an individual touch to this, this piece. Um, you can see the fawn has some white spots on its, um, <laughs> on its fur as well. So I was really going crazy with the dots. So the dots continued on the background and then as I use different colors to blend in and just when I am doing this particular technique I'm also blending the paint a little bit too so they're not completely flat dots I'm blending so it's a little more painterly um, and the same goes for um, the back of the fawn I, I I used I started with different kinds of shades of brown and reddish brown and worked with the shadows like I did in the previous paintings but then I also added little dots of, of color to the back of the fawn just to um, just to spruce her up a little bit Although the background was grey, um, I painted up from it. Um, I like having a back background or an underpainting of grey or a dark brown just because I think it gives more richness to the colours on top. Here I have a little bit of highlighting around the, the fawn just, just to liven it up a little bit. Um, and I haven't demonstrated this in this particular moment but afterwards I will put more matte medium around the edges of the image just so it blends in a little more. There's the dots on the phone. So I think this is a good final touch because it really um, it really gives more of three-dimensional quality to your piece. You pay attention to the lightest lights and the darkest darks and you can't go wrong. Again, I was fairly true to the image of the fawn here. I didn't deviate too much. Um, the playfulness really happened more in the trees with the, the colors in the trees. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I've tried to give you little bits and pieces and some tips that you might use in your own art. Um, I hope that you take some of the, these ideas and, and twist and turn them around and make them yours. Um, there's certainly lots of ways we can add our individual touches um, and I think art really helps us to see the world around us with a different lens.